Hi, I'm Adam Drake, and today we are going to talk about tuning nitro engines. Now, I did a video in the past where we went over some of the tuning basics where we talked about low speed needle, mid speed, high speed, and idle adjustment. Now, before we actually get into the full on tuning, I want to talk about a few things that can have a big effect on the tune of your engine that are often overlooked. Now, with, with tuning, you want to always make sure, for one, that your fuel has been stored in a good uh, dry area. Um, it's very easy for fuel to draw in moisture and you may end up having tons of problems chasing the tune and it's just because you have an old gallon of fuel or a gallon of fuel that was not stored properly. You want to also make sure before you start tuning, you have a fresh air filter. You want to check the fuel line, the gaskets, um, basically the entire fuel system. And you also want to make sure that your clutch is in good shape. A lot of times you can have tuning nightmares that come from any one of those things and no matter which way you go with the needles, you're gonna just chase the tune. So always make sure like with your clutch, when you take it apart to put new clutch bearings in, you wanna inspect the shoes, make sure that the shoes uh, move freely on the clutch pin and that they snap back. Um, Cause again, you can have tuning nightmares if the clutch isn't working properly. The next thing is, before you start to tune the engine, you always want to make sure that the engine is fully saturated with heat. So if it's a newer engine, you're going to want to use a head heater or a heat gun. Make sure that it's up to 180 to 200 degrees before you start making any adjustments. Preferably even maybe a little warmer, maybe 220, but in that 180 to 220 range, you'll, you'll be safe. So for a more experienced tuner, you'll be able to bench tune or tune the engine on the starter box and get it close to where you go out on the track and you may need to go an hour on top or bottom, but, but that should be about it. It's easier to kind of, as, as you start to learn tuning, to just do it on the track or preferably like in a parking lot or driveway uh, where you're the only vehicle running because sometimes it can be a little bit crazy you're trying to tune on the track there's other cars flying by or you're hearing other vehicles and you really want to spend a little bit of time tuning your vehicle where it's just you and your vehicle in an open area where you can hear and see what's going on with the vehicle What's really difficult with tuning is it's not just super cut and dry. You have to be really, really critical and careful and pay a lot of attention to the sound of the engine, the sound of the clutch, and also the feel of the engine and the clutch. And it's something that you can't really teach, it has to just, you have to kind of experience and learn a little bit for yourself. In the video I'm gonna to try to, in some of the future videos, I'm gonna to try to show um, obviously how a good sounding engine and clutch setup runs, but I'm also gonna to try to go through and show what those sounds and the feeling that you would experience if there is a problem with the clutch or if an engine is too lean or too rich and, and try to go over just basically all the, the tuning um, characteristics with a nitro engine. Um, also, don't be afraid to make adjustments. It's, I see people all the time when I'm tuning their engine, I'll go and make an adjustment like to the mid speed and they freak out and they're like, I was always told never touch, touch the mid speed. Now, when you're tuning an engine, if you make an adjustment and it's bad, you can just go back to where you were at or go back even farther 
th that direction. As long as you don't go out and run the engine for an extended period of time where it's extremely lean, you're not really going to damage the engine. So it's okay to make some adjustments and just kind of learn for yourself what those adjustments do. Again, I'm going to be here to kind of coach you through that and give you some insight on things to look for and listen for when tuning. But don't be afraid to make some adjustments yourself and um, you know try to to learn on your own as well because it really comes down to the basically using multiple senses so you're going to use the sense of how it feels when you pull the throttle versus how it sounds when you pull the throttle so we'll try to uh, show that the best that we can and hopefully help uh, make it easier for you to tune your nitro engine. Another thing that I forgot to mention that is super critical before you start tuning your engine is your linkage. You want to make sure that you watch some of my other videos on setting your throttle high point, also setting your brakes, because if your linkage is off, like if you have too much dead band or not enough dead band, you can create uh, tuning nightmares. So when I say dead band, that's basically the gap between uh, where your throttle linkage uh, is at neutral versus what or how far the throttle has to move before it starts actually pulling the linkage. So you can see in some of my other videos where I talk about, again, setting your throttle high point and setting your brake EPA, but you want to make sure that your linkage is set properly and also that your overall throttle pull is set properly. You always want to make sure if you're using a 6.5 Venturi that the carburetor is opening 6.5 millimeters to uh, the size of that Venturi. Um, these are just again some steps that will make tuning a little bit easier and hopefully you don't have the headache of trying to tune an engine and then come to find out it was because of your linkage or a gasket or, or one of these other problems. So um, that should do it for kind of the tuning basics. Now in the next couple videos we'll get into actually tuning the engine out in the street and then also on the track and uh, hopefully it'll make your racing experience a little bit more enjoyable.